ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to a special follow-up episode of Valve Time Spotlight Exclusive. A few weeks ago, we released a pair of videos covering Valve's Aperture VR demo after Nick visited a VR-focused game jam in London. Now that we've cleaned up our video backlog a little bit, we're ready to return to the topic and cover a few more things we either didn't talk about in our original commentary or that weren't immediately obvious from the footage shown. While we'll move on to talking about specifics of the Aperture VR demo later in the video, we're going to start by covering some general information about Steam VR and the HTC Vive. So, let's get to it! As shown by this footage recorded at the event, the current version of the HTC Vive being demoed at events is connected to a PC by four wires connected to the top of the device. Despite being tied together into a single thick cord, we would be lying if we said the cables weren't a bit of a nuisance while acting as the only factor which managed to pull Nick out of the experience as it occasionally bumps into your arm while spinning around or moving. Thankfully, a chat with Chet Falazek after trying the demo revealed that the retail version will ship in the holiday season of 2015 will feature only a single cable, while the controllers will continue to be completely wireless. Chet and other representatives from HTC repeatedly commented that a totally wireless device as powerful as the HTC Vive is just not viable or realistic for the foreseeable future given how much computational power is required at such low latency. These cables are, of course, used to connect the headset and controllers to the PC running whatever programs are in use, while the two lighthouse base stations are connected via two separate wires which can be more carefully hidden around the outside of the play area. When Steam VR is active, the status of the Vive and its multiple devices can be checked using a small, simple UI displayed on a connected monitor. The slightly outdated version featured at the Game Jam includes Steam VR, a compositor, the headset, two controllers, and the two base stations. The public version now available replaces Steam VR and compositor with a single light titled System. When green, the devices and software are operating as intended, while orange helps identify potential problems with just a quick glance. While we're talking about minor details of Steam VR, we think it's fun to mention the taskbar icon used for the VR branch of Source 2 running the Aperture demo. As shown here, the icon currently features the same design as that of Half-Life 2, its episodic sequels, and the original Source engine, only with VR written where the Lambda logo would usually appear. Before you start speculating, this logo more than likely has absolutely no connection to Half-Life 3 or the series in general, and is just a nice callback to the legacy of the original Source engine. With that said, we would also be lying by saying Nick didn't do a triple take upon first seeing the logo from across the room, just in case. During another chat to several other attendees, Chet once again reiterated that the Aperture demo is in no way related to Portal 2, nor it is a sequel such as Portal 3. Even though the Aperture VR demo stands on its own two feet, Chet did confirm the demo is mostly constructed from Portal 2 assets, with a few clear exceptions such as the servers, drawers, and interior of Atlas's head. One of the few areas demonstrating an obvious hybrid between old and new models is GLaDOS, as her body and upper chassis is clearly the same as the one used in Portal 2, while the head has been updated to feature an animated eye with alternating yellow pixels. GLaDOS also appears as an excellent example of the sense of scale present within the Aperture demo, a role also filled rather nicely by Atlas. During Portal 2, the co-op bots are usually perceived as being rather short, standing up to almost the same height as a human. However, the Aperture VR demo provides by far our clearest look at the physical size and shape of the co-op bots, with Atlas's head alone easily matching the height of our six-foot-something editor. The story is largely the same for GLaDOS, with the virtual reality goggles providing an immense and currently unbeatable sense of scale as her enormous frame swings down into the room to confront you. When added to the increased sense of scale, the natural ability to move around the environment and examine equipment at extremely close range brings about new challenges for game designers such as Valve, pushing the boundary for visual fidelity that bit higher. While hyper-realistic visuals certainly won't be the focus of every game made for virtual reality or the Vive, the new assets present within the Aperture VR demo are extremely impressive, as the player is very easily able to read every single piece of text on any of the surfaces in the game. These include labels on the server cabs, figures and schematics on the floating holograms, and various other texts attached to machinery. This increased fidelity also extends to all of the even smaller details of all the stuff we just mentioned, including being able to see every single dial twitch and providing the player with near-frame-perfect control over the movement and speed of Atlas's internal components. In case you were wondering, most of the text on the server cab references the multiverse, a non-canonical infinite number of parallel universes introduced alongside the Perpetual Testing Initiative DLC for Portal 2, while the holograms around Atlas mostly feature seemingly meaningless numbers and figures with no extra easter eggs in sight. Given how different this version of Aperture seems to be from the one we know and love, it's not entirely out of the question to say the demo takes place in one of these alternate dimensions away from the canonical version of Aperture present in Portal and Portal 2. 
The differences between this aperture and the regular one quickly become more apparent. These range from small differences such as the Peabody in the waiting room featuring the same haunting red eye as his unreleased beta counterpart, to large and yet still somewhat hard to notice changes such as having the more modern enrichment center situated on the same level as the old aperture enrichment spheres, despite usually being shown several miles below the surface. As many of you may remember from our database episodes covering the history of the Borealis, Given the testing track in the VR demo also features offices and other non-standard equipment, it's safe to say these minor changes are merely only present to make the enrichment center look as visually interesting as possible. While we're examining things far too closely, we also noticed the demo appeared to have changed slightly since its original public debut at GDC 2015 in March, sometime later confirmed by Chet Falzek during a quick chat with HTC's Shen Yi. While we definitely don't have a conclusive list of all the possible changes, we do know a few more holograms were added to Atlas's floating display and that the two doors were changed to only open halfway as Atlas enters before opening fully as normal. The latter of these changes was apparently made to dissuade playtesters from trying to exit the room during the long entry sequence, something which of course is an impossible task thanks to the Vive's current room scale experience size limits. As we mentioned in our previous video on the subject, a bunch of other Vive exclusive games were also on display, including a few of the third-party GDC demos, and a bunch of new experimental titles created during the game jam. The lack of transparency regarding just how many Vive-compatible titles will be available at launch also got another discussion going, one which concluded with Chet more or less confirming Valve will have at least one thing to release alongside the Vive this holiday season. During the conversation, Chet mentioned the thing they will release, whatever it is, is not the Aperture VR demo or the Dota 2 experience shown off for the first time at the International 2015 in late July, meaning we can likely expect something more fleshed out than either of these currently viewable demos, but not quite a full AAA title. While discussing Dota 2, Chet confirmed the demo we know now as the Secret Shop game was extremely different from the previously highlighted first-person spectator mode. For the time being at least, it'll definitely be worth paying attention to the HTC Vive World Tour, as a number of very welcoming HTC employees Nick spoke with confirmed this will be the best way to experience what the Vive and virtual reality have to offer in the months running up to the official release in the final few months of this year. It's certainly no secret that the World Tour is a little lacking on locations, with the majority of the journey taking place solely in North America. However, we did learn why this is the case, largely due to a lack of manpower and that HTC are looking to hopefully add more locations to the list as time goes on. While the possibility of the Vive visiting EGX in Birmingham in September was originally shot down at the event, recent tweets by Chet Falzek have confirmed both he and possibly Shen Yi will be in attendance at the event in PAX Prime, meaning it's highly likely the HTC Vive will be publicly available on both events, which we certainly hope so. And that'll wrap up this Valtem exclusive episode covering the finer details of the HTC Vive, Steam VR, and the Aperture VR and Dota 2 demos. If you have yet to check out our previous pair of episodes covering the London Game Jam, be sure to check the annotation links on screen right now and to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to follow our Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch TV accounts to make sure you don't miss anything in the future. Thanks for watching and bye for now.